Before we start with our final project in this tutorial here, we want to build a little animation with our rig car. To, th to do this, we need one more function, and this is uh, the ability to steer our front wheels. Um, we could, in this case, either go for a solution like this, where we have a visual controller in here to control the steering. But to cover everything, I will show you how to create a slider for the front wheels and place the slider somewhere here in our viewport. So, to create a slider, we should first of all click on our dodge, for example, on this null object. Go on user data, add user data. In this window, we call this one steering. It's a float number. The interface should be a float slider. Here we see the preview. And it starts from minus 100% to plus 100. And the default value is 0%. Click OK. And because I selected the dodge null object before I created the slider, um, we will always see the slider when I click on dodge, so here under user data. So now open up Expresso. Let's resize the window here. You see that our um, setup is quite complex now. We built this X group over here, and here we can create another one, convert to X group. Call this one banking and maybe make it green, for example, that we have a few different colors in here, just something like a color code. Resize it. Okay. So to bring in my slider here, I will grab the null object where the slider is stored right now. Bring it in here, create an output port. Create an output port, user data, steering. So this is our slider here. And of course, also in this case, we need a range mapper. Connect it. And now let's take a look at our wheels, how much I want to rotate them. So here we have our two null objects for the steering. And if I start to rotate, maybe the maximum should be around 50 degrees. So minus 50 to plus a 50. This is very, uh, yeah, this uh, is quite the, m the maximum amount. We shouldn't need more. Uh, but of course we could change it, sh change it later. So in here, in the range mapper, we, let's activate those two tabs. Our input range is percent because we have this percent slider in here. And the output range should be degree. Input lower is minus 100. This is where our slider starts to plus 100. And it should go from minus 50 degrees to plus 50. So what we need now is just bring in our two null objects that we prepared for the steering. Coordinates, rotation, and we need the heading axis. Resize it and connect them both. And if we now click on the Dutch null object and move our slider, we see that we have a nice control over uh, the steering of the front wheel. So I would like to invert it, I think. So if I drag my slider to the left, he should also Turn the wheels to the left. So, very easy, just go on the range mapper and click reverse. And now if I uh, pull my slider to the right, the steering also goes to the right and also to the left. So, this is fixed, very good. And to bring this, so it's it's not very, um, not very handy to only see the slider when we click on our Dutch null object. So you can just simply take the slider and drag it into your viewport, like this. Then you have it here. To place it again somewhere else, hold down uh, Control on a PC and Command on a Mac. And just left click on, this, um, on the slider and then you can replace it, for example here. And you have it directly in your viewport. You can also um, create keyframes just by uh, Control clicking this tiny circle, like everywhere else. Um, and the problem right now is if we click somewhere else, the slider disappears uh, as long as you haven't selected the Dutch null object. But 
If this is selected, just right click on the slider, go to show, always. So now our um, slider will always be in the view. And yeah, now we have great control. So we can move our car, we can steer, and we can uh, control the banking. So it's time for an animation. I will switch to the top view. And just use the B spline, for example, to build a nice path, something like this maybe. Like this, and we need to adjust this one. And we have a nice uh, curvy track. And I want to end with something like a pack shot for the car. Something like this maybe. So this is now very rough and quick and dirty, but it should work. Um, okay, now I will right click on the Dutch null object and create an align to spline tag. Drag and our spline. So our car snaps to the spline and activate this checkbox that the car looks in the right direction. And I will create a keyframe for the position at frame zero. Go to frame, let's say 200 and 280 maybe. Go to 100 and make another keyframe. So if I go back to my perspective view and go back, let's check the speed of our car. Actually, this looks too slow, so we should grab our keyframe, bring it more to the front. So we have a fast car here. Yeah, this is okay. So I'll, I will go back to frame zero and place my camera somewhere maybe here that I can see really everything. I will create a camera and make the camera a child of the Dutch null object and activate the camera like this. So now if I hit play, the camera will move with the car and I have uh, a great uh, control of the car. And now let's animate this one. So I will first of all create the... So if I now hit play, you see that it looks really stiff and not very realistic and not very dynamic. We should change this. So let's hit rewind. Take the banking, make a keyframe and activate auto keyframe. So if it starts to accelerate for something like this, um, it should look like this because we have a lot of power in this car. Mm, very good. So somewhere here, he should shift in the next gear. So I will bring it to the front maybe and maybe a little bit to the side because we're starting to go into the curve. And here he will um, bring in this second gear but he's already in the curve. And now we will change the sides because we go to a right turn, something like this. Yeah, and I will just uh, animate the star a little bit to, to give it a, a nice motion and that the, the, the weight of the car just feels right. And somewhere here, it, the movement stops, so the car should break. Something like this. And after it stops, it goes back. Maybe a few more frames to come to the perfect uh, ending position, something around here. So this was now very quick and dirty, So, but we can, we can already see that it feels much more natural and much better um, with the, the, the secondary movement of the car, especially here in the ending. If it stops here, you can really feel the, the weight and the power of the car. And it looks very, very nice. And last thing you should do is just to um, adjust the steering. So first of all, we have a curve to the left. So I will 
create a, something like like this maybe left and over here it's more at zero or around zero again zero and then a sharp one to the right Maybe something like this. So this was a pretty fast one, but you can see that it really feels very good just with a few keyframes and the car, yeah, you, you can feel the power and the weight of the car. And last thing you could do is just maybe use uh, yeah, some, some different cameras and place them somewhere in your scene just to, to show this, this great movement of the car. And everything's fully dynamic, so it really works all the time. So. In this lesson you've learned how you can adjust the last functions of our car and we animated uh, the car uh, driving on a small track and now we will start with our final pro project so I'll see you in the next lesson.